Hello and welcome to the lesson on carpal tunnel syndrome. Okay, so my name is John Gibbons and I've got a company called the John Gibbons Bodymaster.co.uk, which I'm sure you will check out. But let's look at uh, the carpal tunnel because many people can suffer with this type of syndrome that affects this region of the body. Now let's have a look at um, the area here. Now if I go onto my pen, which I can draw. So the carpal tunnel, let's have a look at this one first. Okay, you can see there is a tunnel formed around this area. And basically structures will penetrate through the tunnel and the roof of a tunnel it says a ligament here. Okay, so you can either call it the flexor retinaculum, which is here. Medically, it's actually known as the transverse carpal ligament. Okay, so it comes across all the way along here. You can see that. And if you're looking at this picture, um, so this is the right hand, the palmar view. So it comes from the scaphoid and the trapezium along here, and it goes down to the pisiform and the hamate on this side. So that will be the actual ligament yeah, that fills that sort of space. And so that's the top of it there. So within the carpal tunnel, so you basically you've got 10 structures that go through. So you've got tendons. So you've got basically four tendons of the flexor digitorum superficialis. And you've got four tendons of the flexor digitorum profundus. And you've also got the nerve of the median nerve along here. And there's another tendon just there. And that would be the flexor pollicis longus. So you've got 10 structures that go through the carpal tunnel. Uh, this little structure here, okay, it's not really part of this talk, but this is uh, the ulnar nerve just there. And you can see that it's outside the tunnel, the carpal tunnel. It actually goes through another canal. Uh, that'll be on another talk called the, the Canal of Guion. Okay, have a look at this picture. You can see, if you look at the thumb, the index, the middle and half the ring along here, you can see that this area, okay, this area, so the thumb index, middle and half a ring finger is an area that has been shaded. So basically the median nerve will control the sensation to this part of the hand. And then this part of the hand, again, is not part of this talk, will be the ulnar nerve, okay? So it'll be half a ring finger on that side. I think we've done the talk on this structure. Now the median nerve can basically get compressed within the carpal tunnel. The, you know, it's many reasons why. Uh, one reason is that it's a repetitive type of strain injury where the flexor tendons are encased in a, like a synovial sheath. And when you have a condition called tenosynovitis, then obviously it becomes a bit more swollen yeah, because it's been overactivated. And then that reduces the space um, around the median nerve and subsequently it can get irritated and then you get this carpal tunnel syndrome. There are many causes, ladies who are pregnant, you can get it. You can even have um, uh, encephalitis, like an inflammatory situation within the brain that causes, through a liver disease, as far as I read, that can cause it. Um, let's move on. So let's come out of that one and go to the next picture. Now the median nerve origin is actually look on this far left hand side okay it says median nerve so the median nerve basically comes from c5 c6 c7 c8 and also t1 and that's the median nerve here so it starts off if you look if i just follow this it comes up here okay so it comes up from the c5 okay and the c6 nerve root and then comes down you can see along here and if you're looking at C7, so it comes so from here, okay, so C7, it has a branch, okay, and joins along here, and also C8 and T1 comes down, okay, and then forms part of the median nerve here. So basically, it's almost got a level from C5, 6, 7, C8, and T1, so it's got five origins, and as it comes down, it's got one, sorry, it's got one pathway along here. Uh, passes through 
um, the interscalene triangle in the cervical spine, yeah, between the anterior and middle fibers of the scalene. Uh, it goes over the first rib and under the clavicle, as a rib here, and then on it goes uh, underneath the pectoralis minor and down into the arm. As it goes down into the arm, the motor supply, okay, so it supplies many muscles in the forearm, they're listed here, uh, but we're going to move on to the hand quite soon. Yeah, so the median nerve comes down, remember C5, C6, C7, let's use my pen, on that area, and it comes down, okay, and then the median nerve comes down here, okay, and innervates the muscles, I don't need to read all these, you can see that, yeah, and then comes down through the carpal tunnel in here. Now, as it comes down, it actually splits, the median nerve does split into the palmar digital branch and also the recurrent branch. Next page, let's go on. The sensory for the median nerve. You can see, so this is the palm surface. Remember earlier, so I talked about the thumb, index, middle and half, the ring finger along here. This patch is coming from the radial nerve along in this area, okay? Not the best drawer, but you understand what I mean. So that's a radial nerve along this area. Um, so it's mainly coming from the, the palmar digital branch that supplies the sensation along here. And also on the dorsal nail beds, if you like, and a bit more, you can see the half a ring finger here from the proper to palmar digital branch along there. So if someone does have tingling, altered sensation to that area of the hand, it might well be the median nerve is involved coming from the carpal tunnel. Another sensory sort of picture, quite like this one. Okay, so this area, so along here, and here, and here, and half the ring finger. Okay, so that would be from the, the median nerve of the palmar digital branch along here. This would be from the ulnar nerve along this sort of area. And then this is the antibrachial and part of the muscular cutaneous nerve on this side. But this is what we're looking at on that sort of area. And then this is the ulna, like I said. Uh, in the hand, the median nerve. Um, supplies the muscles called the L, the O, the A, the F. Okay, so the um, palmar digital branch supplies the lateral two lumbricals, but still part of the median nerve here. Okay, so that's the L, and then the under sensation to where we said, okay, so we talked about earlier, and the um, recurrent branch of the median nerve will supply the O muscles, if you like, so basically the opponent's policies. The A is the abductor pollicis brevis, and then the F is the flexor pollicis brevis. And these make up the muscles called the phenar eminence within the hand. Okay. One way of testing the median nerve is to do what we call a pinch grip. So if you were to pinch the thumb, okay, and then the index finger, and then you resist that motion because you're basically using the pad of the phenar eminence muscles here. Then um, if it is weak, then you might find the muscles are obviously weak as a result, but it's not a muscle weakness. It might well be due to the entrapment of a median nerve. So that could be a very simple test you could do for that. Have a look at this next picture. So this is a friend of mine, and this is normal, okay? Look at the fullness of the musculature around here. Okay, but look at this one, look at this indentation here. Okay, yeah, so this lady in question had a chronic carpal tunnel syndrome and uh, she was diagnosed with what we just said, carpal tunnel, um, and had it for, well, I'm not sure how long, a couple of years. And um, and you can see a wasting of the abductor pollicis brevis on this side in here. Um, so very weak on the, on the pinch grip as well. So that's an interesting one where you can see atrophy of that, of that muscle. A couple of tests you can do. So this is a standard test named after uh, George S. Phelan. And basically you place the, the back of the hands together for about 30 seconds to see if that uh, brings on any type of symptoms. Uh, you can also do the reverse Phelan. Um, this time you put the palm surface together. Okay, so they're both pretty good for testing for that um, to see if any symptoms come on. Cool. So there's a, a brief introduction into the anatomy of a carpal tunnel and a little bit about carpal tunnel syndrome. I hope you've enjoyed the talk. If you have any questions, you can just uh, leave them where you feel is appropriate. Thank you.